Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at some of the changes in command modern operations brought about by build 1276.1. Before I get started though, I just want to do a quick shout out to the amazing development team over there who are putting together this program and they've been very, very responsive and some of the things that actually showed up in videos have actually ended up being things that later on were improved upon or played with and it's just, it's so cool to see that we have a community that's just that strong for us. So uh, what are we taking a look at today? Uh, first things first, they had a major, major, major database change. This is something they've been working on for a little while and I'm really, really tickled that we have it. But if you actually were to go into like any ground unit, uh, let's pick a T-72 just for fun, you'll actually notice now that we have a combat system mark here. This is the equivalent of the generation. If you remember a little while ago, we had a change where if you pick a particular ship, you can actually see what CS generation is, you know, what command system that you have on board. Now you're probably saying, well, that's pretty cool and it kind of makes sense. You know, if I'm in something like a, a MiG-21, for example, you'll notice that I have steam gauges, you know, fairly complicated steam gauges versus if I'm on something like, I'll oh, try an F-22 you'll notice that they have completely different cockpit styles that have big impacts on their UDA cycle. Now, to give you an idea of what this looks like in game, what I've actually done here is I've set up a really simple scenario where we have a 57 millimeter F-64 and we have a 57 millimeter, uh, basically 57 millimeter, a Zeus 57 times four. These are both the same gun. Now, the big difference here is uh, this one is going to be towed and it's also going to have a little fire control radar on it. You can see we have a flap wheel in this particular case. And you're also going to notice that when we go up to uh, the combat system, you'll notice this is towed and assisted. Now, if we pop down here to this uh, 57, the classic, classic gun here, you'll notice that it is towed and manual. So what does that mean? So let's go ahead and show you the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause and unpause, which I just did. And I have two target helicopters here. So I'm going to grab this one real quick, uh, Shift F1, go ahead and click on that guy. You'll notice that I, it's going to take me just a little bit of time to go ahead and engage this particular target. It's going to take me another six seconds before I can actually start firing. If I click this one with basically the exact same gun on this one, you'll notice it's going to take me a little bit longer to go ahead and engage. 18 seconds. So what does that actually look like? Well, let's watch the difference here. Actually, I'll flag both of these as hostile, otherwise we're going to be here for a while. So I'm just kind of relaxing, you know, stretching a little bit. Ah, so uh, how are you guys doing? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Looks like the radar assisted one has opened fire on a good old friend, the uh, Bell 206 there. It'd be a shame though, because these things are, they're much older helicopters than most people give credit to. And you can also see, it's just, it, it takes a few shots to actually, oh, there it is. <laughs> and then meanwhile, our buddy down here, same gun, same amount of barrels, is taking a lot longer before it can actually engage. And another thing we probably noticed, and you'll find this very interesting, this miss here is because I had a final percent chance to hit of 1%. If you pop down here, notice it's exactly the same bullet. Our hit percentage was 4%. And again, the reason the percentages are a little bit higher is because we were using a radar assist. So go ahead and uh, speed up time here. There we go. I knew we'd hit him eventually. <laughs> if you put enough rounds down range, eventually something will connect. Although it says, has been lost. Love it. Let's see here. It was uh, 1%. My hell agility. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're saying, okay, so obviously if I'm dumb enough to park a helicopter right next to a gun, I kind of had that coming. The only difference there was a few seconds. Well, a few seconds matters. And let me show you what I mean. Let me go ahead and I'll restart my scenario here. We'll go back over to blue team. I'll go ahead and grab, and I have myself, in addition to my Bell 206s here, a pair of F-111s. Now, I know what you're saying. You're like, well, that's not really fair. Those things were designed to be traveling at low altitude and high speed. Uh, yeah, and that's why we're going to use them. So I'm going to go ahead and crank them both up to military here. Go ahead and unpause. We're going to do our little uh, turn in on the target. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to confirm that we're actually going to overpass. You know, I'm going to give these guns maximum chance to go ahead and take their shot at our one or F-111s here, which it's a shame they got rid of those. I always thought they were pretty cool. Keep in mind, we have no, like, A-50 or AWACS or anything like that helping us out. But you can see immediately what the impact of this is going to be. So we'll switch back to red team. I'll go ahead and shut off guide's eye view. We're just relaxing, you know, uh, we're sitting there, you know, joking about that Bell 206 that just flew into our little firing zone and just started hanging out. I mean, what was the deal with that guy? Go ahead and I'll keep in God's eye view here so we can kind of track the combat as it goes. Again, we have no radar backup or anything here. This is just taking a shot, so to speak. So we're still cruising. Oh, it was a beautiful time of day. I didn't turn any weather on or anything along those lines. So it's just going to be a straight up, oh, there's a target fire kind of a situation. All right, they're closing. They're closing. Okay. 
So this one's spotted first, which makes sense. I think he's got a slight hill to him. So I'm gonna go ahead and flag this immediately as hostile. I'm not gonna give them time to identify that particular target. So we've got an oh, there's another one. We've identified that one as hostile, okay. This one's immediately started firing. So it took them no time at all to begin the engagement process. And he's taking pot shots. Notice this one, there's the engagement. And the engagement was basically, you know, became a tail chase as it last second started taking pot shots as it went by. You can see that the little tiny difference between having you know, radar guided control and having you know basically sitting there and cranking big wheels in front of you makes a big difference as far as these kind of engagements. Now you're probably also saying, well, if you made those aircraft come in at afterburner, they never would have gotten shot. Yeah, that, 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 that's tactics though. I mean, I'm not here to talk tactics. I'm just trying to show you some of the practical implications of that kind of a situation. Uh, one other thing that did change, and I think this is uh, pretty wild, and I think it's a really, really uh, neat change because we had some really fun little tests that we we're actually doing with the developer and everything, is they changed the way that the uh, no escape zone launches are handled slightly. So if you actually were to, uh, let's go grab ourselves an SA-2, for example. Good example of a pretty classic system. Uh, okay, ah, too bad it's an SA-20 now. If we're actually to go into its WR, RA, pop up to here real quick. You'll notice that there is no, no escape launch for guided weapons anymore. If I actually bop this, we just have the conventional ranges that we can engage them at. Now, this is a neat twist because what was happening is, is basically as a missile was approaching, missiles approach say at like 2,000 knots, these weapons would fire at the last second because remember the way that the system is modeled is as the target comes towards it, it's basically saying, if that target turned around now, could I still hit it? Obviously, in the real world, you, know, you use energy to turn, stuff like that. So, of course, if your missile doing 3,000, you're not firing into the last second. So it's really, really cool to see that they made that little bit of a change there to kind of preclude that boo-boo um, that some players would probably make, thinking, oh, we want it so the missile can't escape. And it's like, wait. <laughs> but other than that, we have a couple other changes in the new build as well. Um, one thing they did do is like on some of the databases, like I said, all the database items are now equipped with the different components, and they added the database 496, with a ton of uh, new stuff that's on it. Just to give you an idea of how many cool new things we have, uh, this is the change log just for database 496. Now, when you take a look at this, remember that they've added all those like OODA loop changes and stuff along those lines as well. They even came in here and popped in some kind of like next generation stuff, which I think is really, really fun to play with. But if you actually go back to the Cold War database, you can see that they threw in some really, really classic stuff, especially like uh, right on the edge of like the 1940s, kind of 1950s sort of items with a bunch of new loadouts and things along those lines. So pretty cool things. I'm uh, really, really excited to see how this has evolved so much in such a short period of time. And I can't wait to see where they're going to go from here. Enjoy.